Uh, hi there and welcome back. Um, so in the previous videos, uh, we've been talking about um, branch points. Uh, we talked about how there could be two kinds of branch points, uh, an algebraic and a logarithmic branch point. Um, uh, one example of an algebraic branch point is uh, the function uh, z to the power of one third or any function of the form z to the power of one over n, where n is some integer. An example of a function uh, that, that we could think of in terms of having a logarithmic branch point is the argument function itself. Um, and, and we saw in uh, a previous video how the argument function uh, is inherently multi-valued. Um, so in this video, let's extend the discussion and start talking about the complex log function um, and, and see how sort of the complex log function is also multi-valued. It has a logarithmic branch point at the origin and it really inherits this property from uh, the argument function itself. So, uh, so let's get started with that. And uh, so one of the ways uh, to start thinking about the complex log function is as a natural generalization of the way we think of the log of a real number. Um, and one of the properties that the log of a real number has is, 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 is the following, which is that if we take the exponential of the log of a real number, we get back the number itself, right? So this is where x is a real number in this case, x is real. And now what we'll do is, we look for a function, we look for a complex function which has, uh, which, which satisfies the same property. So, in other words, we look for a function log of z such that e to the power of log of z gives us back the complex number z. And our task now is to figure out what this, what is this complex function. And whatever this complex function is, we will call that function the complex log function. So, we have to figure this out figure out this function which has this property okay. um, so let's uh, let's look for a function which satisfies this property okay. now notice that on the left hand side we have an exponential to something and on the right hand side we have the complex number z itself um, and, and it is here that uh, the polar representation of z will be useful because uh, that will allow us to compare exponentials on both sides of an equation um, so let's use the polar representation of z on the right hand side and on the left hand side we have an unknown function log of z. So, so let's write log of z as <coughs> u plus iv where u and v are to be determined so these are unknown and on the right hand side let's write z in its polar representation as uh, magnitude r and e to the power of i times theta. So here uh, again r is the magnitude of the complex number z and theta is its argument. Um, but we know uh, from a previous video that theta is inherently multi-value. In other words, if you're writing z in the form r e to the power of i theta, you might as well write it as r e to the power of i theta plus 2m pi. Because all of these uh, will be a representation of the complex number z. And here m is uh, any integer. Any integer. So let's plug this expression and this expression into this equation and see what we get. So from, from here uh, we have e to the power of u plus iv, this is all in the exponent, should be equal to z which is r e to the power of i theta plus 2m pi. And maybe I should write here that m is some integer or rather it could be any integer. M, M uh, could be 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, any integer uh, from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so uh, now we have an exponential to the power of u plus iv. We can write this as e to the power of u, e to the power of iv equals r e to the power of i theta plus 2m y. Okay, <clears throat> now uh, if you look at both sides of this equation, uh, then Notice that this e to the power of u will be uh, is like the amplitude of this complex number. Likewise, r is the amplitude of the complex number on the right hand side. Uh, whereas, if we compare these exponents, we notice that we have an i here and an i here. So we can compare these two exponents, and uh, or rather the rather uh, rather these two exponents, um, and 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 thereby deduce what u and v are. So just to repeat that, so we have some magnitude e to the power of u, u is some real number, so e to the power of u will also be some real number. So this is like the amplitude of this entire complex number. 
and likewise r is the amplitude of this entire complex number. So we compare this with this and then we compare the exponents of these two complex numbers. Um, so from here we get e to the power of u is r, that's the first thing we get. Now r, u and e are all real, so we can just take the real log of this, uh, this expression and we find that, therefore we find that uh, u is simply log natural r. That's our first relation. And then we compare the exponents of, uh, of the exponentials uh, carrying the, uh, the i factors. So we compare the, exp uh, compare the exponents and from there we find that v is theta plus 2m pi. So that's our second relation. <coughs> so overall, what does this, what this gives us is that if log of z is of the form u plus iv, then u is log natural r plus i times v, which is theta plus 2m pi. And that's basically our complex log. Um, another way of writing this is that for z, uh, which is a complex number, notice that uh, we're using the polar representations for z is r e to the power of i theta plus 2m pi, or in other words, this is the amplitude of z times e to the power of i times argument of z. <coughs> so r is essentially the amplitude of z, uh, or the magnitude of z, and we can write this as log of magnitude of z plus i times theta plus 2m pi is the argument of z. So it's, it's log natural modulus of z plus i times argument of z, and that is the complex log of z. And now you see what this expression tells us. It, it brings the argument of z right into the spotlight. And, and it turns out that for the complex log, the imaginary part of the complex log is actually the argument of the complex number z. Now the argument is inherently multi-valued, and we've talked about this in the previous video. So this has a branch point at z equals zero. Uh, so it's multi-valued, it has a branch point at z equal to zero, and the nature of the branch point is a logarithmic branch point. Because just as we discussed in the previous video, and I'll put a link to that video, um, no matter how many times you wind around the origin, uh, so in this case, as you wind around the origin, m is your winding number. So if m is zero, uh, so maybe we can just draw, uh, look at this pictorially again. So let's say this is the z plane. <coughs> uh, so if you're at some point z here, which is say r e to the power i theta, then this is r and this is theta. Um, so here theta could be the principal value of the, uh, of, of the argument for the complex number z and m denotes the number of times you wind around this uh, which will give you an additional phase uh, whereby you pick up additional phases in multiples of 2 pi. So if you wind around this once and come back to the point z, uh, your theta increments by 2 pi so it will become theta plus 2 pi. And if you look at the, uh, the double plane, so maybe we can get rid of this, so just keep the definition of log. And if you look at the mapping to the double plane for the log function, then uh, this is u, this is v, this is x, this is y. Um, then u is log natural modulus of z. As you wind around the origin in a, uh, along the circle, for instance, uh, your u, which is log natural, oh, which is r, so this is u, which is log natural r, remains fixed. So you might be somewhere here. And your initial value theta might be somewhere here. So you might begin your journey somewhere here. If, if, if this is z, and then in the double plane, you might begin your journey somewhere here. So you wind around the origin once in a circle. Uh, what that uh, what that does to the uh, to, 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 to the trajectory in the uh, the double plane is that uh, it, it keeps log natural r fixed, but you move along this vertical from theta to theta plus two pi. Um, if you wind around this a second time, then you move further along this and reach theta plus four pi. And, and, and if you re keep repeating this process, you see that if you begin your journey here, you keep moving away from this point, away and away from this point, as you keep winding around the origin. Um, so log z um, is, so log z is, has uh, two properties. First of all, there is a branch point at z equal to zero. So this is a branch point. And this is a logarithmic branch point. And, and again, it inherits all of these properties because the argument function is really the imaginary part of the complex law. And again, 
the way uh, to figure out a single value branch for the, from this uh, for the log function is to draw a branch cut and one of the the good choices you can make is to draw a branch cut along the uh, negative real axis somewhere there and therefore restrict the argument to lie between minus pi to 0 and 0 to 5. So this is again a typical choice that you can make uh, to figure out a single valued branch of this function is to restrict the argument to the range that uh, theta is less than or equal to pi and greater than minus pi. And if you do this then you've picked out the principal branch of the log complex log function. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I hope uh, this was of some use and actually the complex log function has many applications also. Like it comes across many, many applications and uh, in future videos we'll talk about some of these. But the basic idea and one of the ways of defining a complex log is, is uh, what we talked about in this video. And we saw how it's related to the, uh, the argument function and, and how it in inherits the multi-valued nature of the argument function. And the way to extract a single valued branch for this uh, multi-valued function is again uh, something that we talked about uh, something that follows from our discussion of the argument function itself. So, um, so yeah, I hope this was of some use and hope to see you soon again. Thanks for watching.